Hey, you guys. Hi. Hello, and welcome to the Good News Sunday Show. My name is Sonia McCullough Lockridge, and I am your host. Today, today, we are studying the prayer of Jesus prior to going to the cross. We are looking at the prayer in John 17 of Jesus prior to going to the cross, prior to crucifixion, prior to Calvary. And we're doing that in this epidemic season, in this pandemic season, in so that we would know better how to pray. So the prayer in John 17, Jesus' prayer in John 17, is actually broken down into three parts. It's broken down into three parts. And part one is when Jesus prays to the Father in regards to the finished work and in regards to his relationship. Part two is when Jesus prays for the disciples. And part three is when Jesus prays for all believers. That would include you and me. So what we have been doing since last Monday we started studying this prayer on Facebook. And then yesterday, we studied the middle portion of the prayer in hopes that we would get to YouTube, but we never have. So we've had some technical difficulties as we are out in the Middle, t middle, middle Tennessee countryside, we've had some te technical difficulties out here in getting adjusted to the new, this new countryside life. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to read this prayer in its entirety, and then we will come back and look at the sections of the prayer in depth. So we're going to read it in its entirety today and then we will come back later and look at the sections one, two, and three in their entirety and this of course will be called part one, two, and three and this will be the introduction. Okay so John 17 Jesus praying knowing knowing full well that crucifixion is in his future. Knowing full well that the cross is in his future. Knowing full well that Calvary is in his future. Knowing full well the betrayal of Judas is in his future. This is his prayer. Jesus spoke these things and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them, and they received them, and truly understood that I came forth from you, and they believed that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, 
but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, and not one of them perished but the son of perdition, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so that they may, so that they may have my joy full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word. Those also that believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, although the world has not known you yet, I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have made your name known to them, and will make it known so that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. That is the entirety of the prayer of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, prior to his journey to the cross, prior to his journey to crucifixion, prior to his journey to Calvary. John 17, 1 through 26, I have read to you today. The next video, we will study each section in depth. So we will have this, our introduction, then we will look at the beginning of the prayer, the middle of the prayer, and the end of the prayer. And then we will look at our conclusions. This Holy Week, this precious Holy Week, even in the midst of this pandemic, do we know Jesus? Do we know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? That is the question of the hour. As crisis mounts around us, as the news 
grows worse and worse. As we shed tears. As we shop for toilet paper. Tears and toilet paper. This holy season. Hopefully and prayerfully, we are in deep prayer in regards to what we are to learn in this holy season. What we are to learn. This prayer in particular teaches us much. So the next time I see you on a video here on YouTube, it will be to look at the first six verses of this prayer of our Lord and Savior in the midst of the beginning of his personal, personal crisis. This is Sonia signing out for the Good News Sunday Show. Keyword Bible studies, the daily keyword, and the Gap prayer band. Have a great day. Enjoy the spring. And know that I'm praying. I am praying. I'm praying for my world. And I am praying for our country, our government. Praying for it all, y'all. In deep prayer for it all. In the middle of the Tennessee countryside. Signing out. This is Sonia signing out. And... I might have to change my tagline because up until now, it's been, we still have time. But as you well know, as you well know, time, we don't have as much time as we may have thought we did. But as long as we have breath, incidentally, pumping through our lungs, incidentally, we still have time to make our election sure, just as the thief on the cross did. We still have time to make our election sure, just as the thief on the cross did. For we know Jesus told him, only Jesus told him, that today you will be with me in paradise. Sonia, signing out. Thank you.